Hey everybody, it's JT here from the Poetic Minecart, and we're back in another interview. It didn't take long for another one to get planned, um, and I'm I've been so so blessed, so lucky, so like it's just so great that I'm getting to talk to such amazing people on the channel. Um, I actually also have two more planned with scheduled dates and times for April. And I have one that I'm planning now that doesn't have an official date yet. So it's amazing. It's so cool. Um, but today we are interviewing Allie Murphy, the voice of Betty in Bendy and the Dark Revival. Let me introduce you to her right now. There she is. Hello. <laughs> Oh no, the background still says Dave Rivas. One sec. <laughs> the background still says an interview Dave? with Dave. <laughs> Done. Fixed. All right. <laughs> Allie yeah. Murphy, not Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Officially not Dave. <laughs> Officially not Dave. We we were afraid for a second that you were. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. He wants more. We only we only have we only have room for one Dave Rivas in this world. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <sighs> all right because i have these things on the interview on the top is the the joey drew studios logo oh, and then okay. on the bottom it says an interview with ali murphy but it said an interview yeah. with dave Rivas. i was no, like i mean he's no. a good actor, but... <laughs> i was like this isn't right <laughs> i love it Okay, um, so yes, this is Allie Murphy, the voice of Betty in Bendy and the Dark Revival, and um, she's been in some other things. I w forgot to make a list of things she's been in like I did with Dave, but other things you might know her from are, wait, <laughs> I'm looking at your IMDb now because I forgot to make a list. Um, like... you might know her from uh <laughs> i this is already a disaster i'm sorry um <laughs> no. there's some other video games uh like uh dance of death and i'm looking at all the different games uh Dungeons and Dragons Online. Um, I think you've been in some TV shows too, right? Only a couple, yeah. <laughs> it's just a few. Yeah. Sorry, I was supposed. I I'm British. I'm <laughs> you know. flubbing this already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so much for professionality. That's not even a word. I don't think. <laughs> it is now. It is now. Yes. That's that's how words are made, right? You know, someone just mm -hmm. says it. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So for today's interview, um, we have I have written out some questions, and unlike Dave's interview, <laughs> I sent her the questions beforehand so she could be prepared for the questions. Because Dave's was just kind of a shoot, this is my first time interviewing someone, like, really big, and so, like, it was kind of a test run, I suppose, but um, I feel like as the interviews go on, I'll probably stop having so many mishaps. Like, before this interview, I spent 30 minutes trying to get my webcam to work on Discord. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. You got it done. You got it done. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> In the last interview uh, with Dave, for like 30, almost 40 minutes before our interview, was just Dave trying to get his microphone to work. <laughs> you think he'd know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, you think, you think he'd have like really good mic? And I was just like, it was very like... It was kind of humbling to see that I wasn't the only one struggling with technology. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to us all. Okay, so I, I say we just, we just hop right into it. <laughs> anyway. um, so, yes, everybody. Allie Murphy! <laughs> Da-da-da! <laughs> um, so... 
Got to calm down. <laughs> All right. Question one of this great interview with Allie Murphy is, how long have you been slash wanted to be a voice actor slash actor? I remember being about 11 years old and um, I just wanted to be an actor. So I remember looking up in the yellow pages, which I don't know what they're called in America. I guess it's white pages. I don't know, like a big phone book and like having a look oh. and seeing where I could find like a, a, a local theatre company. And I found like a little youth theatre, like a community theatre kind of thing. And I joined that and I just fell in love. And I was, that was my life. Like as a teenager, I was just theatre yeah. kid and I loved it. So um, and then I remember uh, when I got to write, I, I, I mean, I tried to be, I was on TV when I was a teenager and stuff, but uh, I, I remember I got a bit uh, disheartened. I got told when I was about 20 that I was not um, not beautiful enough mm. and a bit overweight and not like um, not unusual looking enough to be an actor. So I gave it up and I gave it up for about 14 years. Yeah, it was tough. And I, I got another job and everything. I was like a flight attendant for 14 years. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I remember hearing about that, that on the... On the signing the event. Last, last the signing talk. event, yes. Yeah, yeah. I heard you talk about that on the signing. Yeah, event. so I did that because I, I gave up my dreams. But then um, <laughs> by, by fate, I ended up actually getting asked to do some voiceover um, for a uh, for Weight Watchers, actually, because <laughs> I lost a load of weight on Weight Watchers. And they asked me to do some commercials um, for them, and I did some voiceover, and I just fell in love again. I was like, oh, I remember this. I remember being like... <laughs> I being remember that buzz. <laughs> Yeah, just like that buzz of being yeah. like part of a team that's creating something. And I just loved it. And then I and then I kind of so I kind of had a look online and saw if there were any voiceover classes in London. And yeah, I joined. And then I quit flying and and, and started. Just went straight into being a full time voice actor. That's really cool. I was but, like, it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do love it, and I'm very, I feel very very lucky. That I actually get to do it as a job now. I mean, if I could just tell eleven year old Ali that that this is what I'd be doing, you get there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah um okay my next question on this lovely totally professional interview fine. <laughs> is um what made you want to be an actor like who was your inspiration if you had to like pick a person or like a tv show that made you fall in love with it or you know it's really hard to say because my my mum used to take me to see musicals in London, and I think that's where I kind of I just the just watching these people on stage and just I don't know being in an entire different world. And I think that's what got me was is just being able to actually just take yourself out of whoever you were at the time and being a whole different person and like embodying that person, feeling their feelings and stuff. I've always been a bit of an like an empath, like I can. Mm -hmm feel stuff really easily and um and it I think that's acting kind of, a bit easier <laughs> yeah because I just I when I when I'm in character I am just that character so if I'm upset about something or happy about something then I would just be that <laughs> and I, I I was just addictive and and so yeah so I guess it was my mum taking me to all these theater shows it was was just that's yeah unbelievable I never really like went to shows until I was in seventh grade because then I got to, my school did a trip to the Ashland Shakespeare Festival every year. Oh, wow. And yeah. um, I got to go see a couple shows that first year and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I love it. I remember my little brother, he refused to go to the shows and one time my mum kind of made him we were in London and he was like nine years old and he was like no I'm waiting outside <laughs> and he was like no you're not it's London you'll die and uh, so she forced him to go in and it was a show called Blood Brothers and he sat there like this the whole oh time God, I love like, this. and now He's like he's like a forty year old man, and he's a he's a firefighter and stuff. He he's not a, he's not a professional actor, <laughs> but he's like the lead in. He's starring in a show called The Full Monty um, in uh, July, which I don't know if you've heard. It's a British kind of show. It's a I it's a movie, know, but it's also I've it's about a bunch of like um, northern people who are like on um, 
on benefits and stuff like that and then and then they decide to put on this strip show <laughs> so he's like <laughs> but he's like so in his day job he's like a firefighter but it's he's like still got that love in- but yeah it'll be fun but yeah it's, it's, i think sometimes it can just get you it can that bug can bite you and it's really hard to let go of it yeah the the theater bug is very strong <laughs> yeah it's a very big bug yeah and it just lets you get everything out like i just always feel like after like a big like session like a voiceover session or acting or something like that you always just feel like you've released a load of stuff yeah i like playing like really emotional characters yeah because it feels like i could just put all of my kept in emotions into it just like like there's a little bit of me in here (laughs) yeah and And it's just nice being vulnerable and like letting stuff out and just being it's so yeah i do i love it and i have discovered through becoming part of acting that i can make myself cry on command so i'm like i'm (laughs) like so if i'm like reading an emotional line even if it's just over voice and not a video i can make myself cry almost instantly and i think that's pretty i think it's a it's a good skill to have for sure yeah definitely yeah absolutely just have it all at the surface there and just have it kind of rise up and then just at the climax of the line just let it all out yeah mm-hmm. definitely i love yeah. it yeah uh da, 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 da. my list okay there it is found i found the document again i don't know where it went um okay so for acting did you go to like did you go to college or school for acting or did you take like in like in-person theater classes like local classes or like and do you think yeah. that like people like me or people who want to be voice actors should go to like college for it and like get a degree in fine arts or in like voice or things like that I did I mean I went to um I think the education system is a little different in in the UK. So I went to college at age 16. You kind of go to college if you Mm. you want to, but you don't have to pay for it. It's just, it's another part of the free education system, I guess. I guess it's like final years in high school. Um, So I went to a performing arts college, like, well, it's like an arts and technology college. And I did a a basic kind of free course in performing arts, which covered everything. Um, but after that, I couldn't afford to go to university. Like I couldn't afford to do, I could definitely couldn't afford to go to drama school. It was just so beyond my means and my parents' means and stuff. So I couldn't do that. So I took classes when I could. I went to community theater. Um, I did what I could and I worked when I could and just got as much information as I could and could afford it. I think a lot, it really bugs me about acting and voiceover is that it's like it can be super elitist and when people are like oh darling you have to go four years to rada or something it's like okay yeah i mean it's great if you can but also that's not the only thing and if you if you say that's the only way that you can be in the industry then you're excluding talents who who don't have the money to be able to put into all that education you're excluding all of their life experiences and all of that um talent that that is raw and maybe can be of service in the industry so so i think if you can go to college and university great but if you can't then you know go to join a local community theater you can learn so much from that watch webinars watch and um, try online classes you know if you're not in la or new york or wherever then see what you can find out online and see if there's any local classes you can take and and anything for free <laughs> I think it's yeah you can it's nice it's a nice to have but I don't think it's absolutely necessary yeah that's what that's what some people had told me before because I was like man I don't know about college I kind of just want to be done with school after this year (laughs) but like I because I I do though because you know there's no such thing as being perfect at acting you can always improve no matter yeah. what, there's Everybody, always room like, for improvement. So I'm just yeah. like getting a degree, getting a bachelor's in fine arts, anything like that, taking dance classes, singing lessons, all of that would be really helpful for a career. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I don't one hundred. I'm I. People have told me you don't a hundred percent need to do that, but 
it you know what I think is definitely... useful like if you can't if you can't afford to take classes because it is it's important to always be growing if you're not growing then you're just stopping and yeah you're never gonna people are going and overtake you and stuff like that but what I did with a few voiceover friends at the very beginning is we we set up like a little workout group um, online like the there was four of us and and we would all bring a script um, and we'd have like an hour or two hour session and we'd work together and give each other feedback. And and I think if you, if you can find, I find like a buddy that you can work with and, and create your own content as well. If you can't like attend classes, then make a film, like do it on your iPhone. Yeah. It's, it, you can do this. It's not, it's not necessarily all about taking the big expensive courses or do the top coaches and stuff. Just don't stop, don't stop growing, but you can do it without having the big bank balance yeah um okay what's my next question um i think we kind of already answered this next one um which was you know you were flight attendant for years yeah. and years um how long were you a flight attendant for 14 years oh yeah you did say <laughs> yeah, that I'm just, i flew internationally yeah. you know that's so like <laughs> how many different how many different like countries did you fly to yeah I think the only place that we didn't we didn't fly to europe but obviously i lived in europe so that's fine but um and we didn't fly to south america other than that everywhere i spent most of my time in the states i think maybe sort of that's super six, cool six flights a month so i was mainly spending my time in the states australia asia africa yeah it was good yeah that seems like really really cool I would love to, see to do that. I mean, I'm not very good with <laughs> with airplanes. I like, I get a it's lot of, of uh, I get a lot of ear pain when they land. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it might not be the best job. Then. <laughs> but it, my favorite part about being on an airplane is sleeping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> so it's probably not the best job for me. No. <laughs> but it would be fun to travel for a living. I think that yeah. that sounds. It wasn't like the job I loved. Fun. It was the it was the time down route that I loved. So. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay. So the next question. Um, what is your favorite video game and why? If you have one. <clears throat> I think there's there's kind of two, and the first one is just because it was one of the first like. In video games i just was obsessed about when i was a kid and that um day of the tentacle loved that game when i was when i was younger you, you yeah i think it was before you were born even. <laughs> oh my goodness it's so good but now you can play it on your phone I, i've like downloaded it on my phone and i loved it it was like a puzzle solving game and it was just so much fun um back oh. in the day um that's when the 90s i've always played that but uh and then but more recently, um, Life is Strange, I really like. Mm, and again, yeah, I'm, I'm, Life is so. Strange is a great game. Yeah, and, and for that, I just really like the narrative of it, and the voice acting is really good. And, yeah. yeah. It's just really kind of immersive, despite the fact that I usually I play it on my phone, so I'm like, I'm not like <laughs> completely surrounded by it. Yeah. But, but yeah, and I, I do like, I do like VR games, but I'm limited to how what I can play on that because I get kind of freaked out. Fair <laughs> enough. I like to play uh, Beat Saber on VR. Oh yeah, that's a it's good like one. it's so fun. I think that's the I think Beat Saber is the reason that the only strong part of my body is my arms. <laughs> work, right? I've I've let the re I feel like I've let the rest of me go, but my arms are just. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, yeah. my husband is um, my husband's an animator. He works in video games and he, he specializes in VR. So. I end up seeing a lot of things from his point of view on what he's been doing and stuff like that. That's pretty and cool. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, he's, he does like, um, his last game was um, Half-Life Alex. Hi, Caddy. <laughs> you are a big person. He is a very big cat. Big boy. Um, so, yeah, I remember he was, we, he was working on Half-Life Alex and he was like, um, can you just like, Put this on. I just want to. See, I just need to check on something. And he put the headset on me, and I was like, "Nothing's going to come and get me, is it?" He's like, "No, no, it's absolutely fine." And so I put it on, and I was just kind of like looking around the room, and there's all these like, like dead creatures everywhere. This <laughs> is kind of weird. And then I just hear this <laughs> up the stairs. And I was like, "Look at it off!" It's like I can see this thing like coming at me like this. So I'm more better. I'm better at things like there's like, a video game that I was in called Vacation Simulator. 
Ooh. That we are. And like during the pandemic. I feel like I've heard of that one. Oh, it's so much. It's such a fun game. Like during the pandemic, I, I had like a young baby. My baby was like six, seven months old. So every time he napped, I was like, I need a break. So I'd go into like vacation simulator and just play like stupid things like building sandcastles. <laughs> making hot dogs and stuff and i just felt like i was on holiday for a little bit because i just love that fully immersive thing oh of like being, okay you know, yeah different... i do know vacations it's made by the same people who made job simulator yeah yeah I absolutely love... job yeah. simulator was so fun that's such a i know game. i do like that one as well but yeah my kid's older now so needs more attention <laughs> so i can't <laughs> play that one as much fair enough um the cat is bugging me now He's, he's woken up from his long winter's nap. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I do. I should play Vacation Simulator and try and find and hunt hunt for your voice in the game. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm probably the only British one in there. I'll go play try, a teenage, I'll try and find teenage bot. I play. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. Like I didn't really play it to look at me, but like all the other all the other actors were great. <laughs> And then um, when I got to my bit, I was like, oh, that's weird. I'm kind of doing stuff because I'm like telling listening my... to your own voice. <laughs> like you're <laughs> playing the game and watching you walk around in the. <laughs> yeah. Like... Thankfully, I was unrecognizable. So... <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, God, there's two bees. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, on uh, this qu next question. Um, so this is. Oh. <laughs> my next question is what is your favorite character that you've played slash voiced uh, oh I know so it was one of my first video games that I did um, another VR game called Dimension Hunter Dimension and um, Hunter. it's not like most of the games I've been people probably wouldn't have heard of it um, but I played this um, kind of robot called Bob who was just um, just kind of really sarcastic and dry and really like uh, trying to guide guide the guy a lot of it was like tutorial like guiding the players how to learn how to shoot things and goes oh, I don't know just shoot it or whatever I don't know you you're in charge here and it was just really kind of like a real like snarky robot and I kind of enjoyed that <laughs> so that's cool I think a lot of the the, the inspiration was from um Stephen Merchant in Portal like just oh, kind of oh really... yeah <laughs> When you said when you said Bob, the uh, Porter's voice immediately came to my mind. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, <Yeah>. Bobby. <laughs> oh, he's so funny. <laughs> I I I love I love Porter. Porter's such a <laughs> silly character. He really is. I love him. Um, I've been in a few things, and uh, nothing that's like a paid thing or like an official thing. But I am, um, I'm in a Bendy fan game right now that's mm -hmm. being made. Um, I play quite a few characters in the game. Oh, wow. I play Henry Stein. I play Joey Drew, Sammy Lawrence, Bertram, uh, Jack Fane, and Wally Franks. Oh wow! They are all that's... very different voices, and yeah, that's a lot I'm of, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best to not make it sound like they're all done by the same person. because yeah, <laughs> I fun. I play like half of the game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and I'm having conversations with each other. <laughs> yeah, like... it's just it's gonna be like Henry like reacting to a tape of Wally. I'm just gonna be like. Hey, an old tape, and well, and I'm gonna be as Wally. Hey, so get this, get out of here. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> just talking with myself. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, okay. Um, were you okay? Next question. Were you a fan of Bendy before you were cast in Dark Revival? Like, did you know, like? the first game and were you a fan of it ahead of time type of thing but i always hate this question because i just feel really bad to say like actually i didn't i didn't know about it. <laughs> no um, dave didn't either that's yeah because <laughs> i think like especially because i'm like <laughs> considering the game i'm in i'm not very good with horror like i get freaked out really easily like just to put it out there i watched the movie scream in the uh, 90s like and, with and the first one 
Yeah, really? I fainted. Fair Sorry. enough. I mean, <laughs> 18 uh, years Matthew old. Willard. Matthew Willard is Stu. Incredibly terrifying character. Yeah. So I wasn't was not good at that. So um so yeah uh I didn't know about it. Sorry, but when the, as soon as I auditioned for it and got the part, I was like, oh wow. Uh, what I was blown away by was the art style. It was yeah, just it looks so cool. Dark Revival. Yeah, it just, it's such cool. an upgrade from the first game too. Yeah, it's, it's it, like all the styles are completely redone. Like I think the biggest change in character designs would have to be Bendy mm -hmm. from the fir original Ink Demon to this new one. Yeah. Um, and he got so much cooler. <laughs> it's yeah. so much scarier because before he was just kind of like a weird zombie guy that limped around. And now yeah. he's like this big, all powerful yeah. creature with, with um, like satyr legs. And, and that voice as well. That, I mean, Sean Kristen. I don't know how he does it. I like I also finding like, out that he did it without a voice changer at all. I was like, <laughs> when he like would do it live at the signings, I was like, what? Because I can yeah. like I can like kind of do it like the dark puddles awaken. Oh, there you that's, go. That's about that, like, it. <laughs> like fluid in there somewhere. Isn't yeah, it? it's yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but man, Sean like voicing the ink dude it was crazy and i think the other biggest like quality change in design was probably uh the butcher gang members because mm. they were just they're so much more detailed now and so yeah. much scarier than they were so i could see I like it's definitely worth the wait i think I yeah it was, it was like, worth the wait oh, i mean I weren't the lines recorded like three years ago <laughs> yeah yeah pretty <laughs> it much yeah. it took it took a while there was you know controversies but but it did i'm glad that it finally got done if it hadn't i wouldn't be here right now talking with you <laughs> <laughs> but, and it got done very well <laughs> yes it was like definitely worth the wait uh some games take forever claiming that they're making it better and then it's still like a terrible game like uh the newest five nights at freddy's game security breach uh mm -hmm. we got the first trailer for it in early 2020 and the game got released in december of 2021 i think yeah um it was originally supposed to be released mid 2020 Wow. And uh, the thing is, it was because they kept making the game bigger and bigger and bigger. It was originally such a simple thing, and then they just kept expanding it. And the problem with expanding it is they missed a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And a mm -hmm. lot of the things that were used in the trailers weren't even in the game. Like, it couldn't change they, that much. They removed yeah. a lot of content, they added a lot of content, and... Overall, it was a buggy, terrible, poorly written game. Because oh, the story didn't even like fit the previous games at all. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the main reason for that is because it was made by a, com a full company. And every game before that was made by one single person. Yeah, so and it kind of got yeah, a lot of it kinda opinion. Got, <laughs> it got opinionated. It got yeah. definitely some things like that um you can't see it but the cat is literally right on the other side of this phone <laughs> he's like right there ah <laughs> hi buds he's he's a he's a silly little guy um but yeah um i've i've been a fan of bendy well i guess when the game came out i wasn't a major fan but uh, I I bought the game and I started playing it, and this was when I was like thirteen. <laughs> yeah. So I got halfway through chapter one, and then like an ink pipe bursts at one point, <laughs> and it scared me so bad that I put the game away and never played it again. <laughs> I don't blame you. And then, <laughs> and then finally, um. Like, probably about two years after the final chapter of the game released. 
<laughs> I finally sat down and just played through the whole game, uh, recorded videos of it and everything. And now I like uh, I speed run the game where I will just play it from start to finish as fast as I can. Oh, wow. Um, I'm placed, I think, in 51st place in the whole world for a full run of the game. Oh, wow. That's which amazing. Which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I think my, my best time ever, I didn't record it, so I don't have it in the records. But mm -hmm. my best time was an hour and 56 minutes oh, for wow. all five chapters. Yeah. And the one that's in the records, it's kind of sad. It's an hour and 57 minutes. Oh, painful. <laughs> One minute off. <laughs> One time, so the very first time I speed ran it, I got my best time. An hour, 56 minutes, and 23 seconds. Oh, wow. And then um, I speed ran it and recorded it. And I got an hour, 56 minutes, and 27 seconds. Oh. I missed it by like four seconds. <laughs> I was like so close, but that's a tense yeah. hours as well. <laughs> it's like, it's going, oh, it's, <laughs> I've become completely numb to that game, so nothing like jump scares me anymore, and I just kind of yeah. just go through it. And the the first bendy game doesn't have like a stamina thing like the second one, because in Dark Revival you can only run for a certain amount of time and then you're out of breath. But yeah. in the first game you can run the whole time and never slow yeah. down. And it's it makes it very a lot easier for speed runs, but one thing um I'm I don't know if I'm ever gonna speed run the Dark Revival because it's so long, but yeah. I'm also not really used to the game yet. I just finished it two weeks ago, but um also it the only thing that the only thing making me tempted to speed run it is because um. You can skip cutscenes in the second game, and you yeah. couldn't do that in the first one. So yeah. you had to sit through them in all your speed runs. <laughs> <laughs> but now you can actually skip through it, which is nice. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, I got off track. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, next question. Um, so how did you how did you find Bendy? Was there like a casting call on a website somewhere or did a friend tell you, "Hey, this game" or was it because of a contact or something like it that? It was the contact. Yeah, there was um uh, there's the the casting director, uh, Lani Manella, who Oh, Lani Manella, yeah. Yeah, she like she'd been sending me auditions for a little while and um she's just an awesome person and yeah, so she sent me the audition. But I remember I was actually I, on a tiny little like staycation at the time. It was the first time me and my husband had managed to get away after the pandemic and well, during the pandemic, I guess it was. But and we had a little baby and I was like, oh, man, I got this audition and I really want to do it. And I kind of tried to do it like under a duvet in the hotel bathroom and it sounded awful. And Lani was like, yeah, you're going to have to do that again. <laughs> echoey and stuff like that but so I was like I got home and did it in my studio and it was fine but yeah yeah I really enjoyed it it was good fun yeah that's yeah um that was the same thing Dave said was Lonnie Manila contact got him into the yeah. game she's amazing uh, but yeah I that's pretty cool I mean man I was thinking about it the other day I was like man I hope I can be in, I can audition for the next Bendy game if they make one, because that yeah. would be so cool. <laughs> like <laughs> I would, I would love <laughs> that. I just, I don't know how I'd f like find it. You know, like yeah. If they have like a website with audition to submit auditions or like. I don't know what. Yeah, what I don't know about that one, but you know, like if you want to do video game and stuff like that. Let me find, let me find, um, I see a lot of casting calls go out on Twitter uh, under, uh, let me just find it, sorry, because I I literally get like a million messages a day saying, oh, this is a casting call. Oh, I've got so many tweets today, I can't see. I think it's called <laughs> like voice actors, come on, man. Somebody, somebody tweeted, <laughs> acted me the other day and now I can't find anything else other than this one tweet. Um <clears throat> VA casting call RT on Twitter. 
it's like voice actor, VA casting call, RT, retweets casting calls. So it actually goes out and finds all the casting calls for you. And they're mainly video VA game casting ones. Casting call, RT. Oh, yeah. I am now following them. <laughs> yeah, follow that. And then like every opportunity that they tweet out, have a look at it. If you're suitable, go for it. And, and you know, that just gets you, get, that gets you going with your, with your career. Uh, and and work some of it's um most of it's paid some of it isn't but it just gives you a really good start of like making some contacts and getting some work behind you and getting some like um yeah i get some material that you can show people so if you did want to contact casting directors you could be like oh hey here's the work that i did in this game or um yeah i think so, so it's a good idea to do that <laughs> yeah i'll definitely have to you have a microphone so <laughs> I do, I do have a good microphone. Yeah. It, it it still picks up a little bit of background noise every now and then, especially when I'm like... <laughs> yeah, it's trying but... to keep still. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> but other than that, it's not terrible. Um, I just got this boom arm for my mic, like, literally a week after I interviewed Dave. Because oh, wow. I was like, I need one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I need this. Because before, my mic was sitting on my desk with this stand. Yeah. And it would pick up every vibration. Yeah, if you're and tapping on anything. So and <laughs> But now it's not that bad. Um, See? And like every, like the, every voice actor that's got like big studios in their houses, they didn't start off like that. Like I started off in my in my closet. <laughs> like surrounded by clothes which was actually was a really good like sound scent. dampener yeah yes yeah, and dampener um and now i have a booth that's kind of mostly built but i still need to put some panels on it <laughs> it's taken me about three four if months if i had an extra empty room in my house i would make a studio for recording but i don't <laughs> well, it's, I mean a lot of people do like you can find it on youtube it's super easy to you can get like some pvc pipes and some acoustic curtains um, from like vocal booth to go do acoustic curtains. They're really good. I've got an acoustic curtain in my booth that just covers the door because I couldn't get the right sound I wanted at the door. So I just put a curtain over it. So yeah, and like people just literally stand in, in their bedrooms and stuff as long as it's reasonably quiet. You're not gonna like get hear dogs barking next door or something then. Yeah. You can work like that. There's 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 meet and people earn thousands of dollars just working in their bedrooms with acoustic curtains on PVC yeah. pipes. <laughs> My, I I would try and set something up like that, but. I have a queen size bed in my room and it takes up three quarters of my bedroom. Well, you could even just where you're sat right now. Yeah. Just put some, I'd put some panels. The bed and the, yeah, just put some panels even. The like acoustic there. panels. Yeah. Just anything that's just going to stop echo. Or, um, yeah, put a, a runner on the ceiling, like a shower curtain runner. <laughs> you know, like one of these and square shower booth curtains. In between the bed and the desk. It's just uh, there's there's so many different ways of doing it like i say like i'm really kind of against acting and voice acting being such an elitist yeah um, job. you can do it and people do do it nobody starts off like unless you're a millionaire starting off <laughs> getting a professional booth in your mansion <laughs> it's not gonna start. I think Get a new closet. <laughs> I think when whenever we're done with this interview, I'm definitely gonna go on that Twitter and just start auditioning for things. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Go <laughs> see for it. what I can get, see what I can yeah. grab. Because yeah. uh for a while I've been using this website called uh castingcall.club. Oh yeah. And it's not the best because there's not many paid things on there. But I mostly audition for, like, video game role play things when I audition for exi pre-existing characters. Yeah. But it would be really cool to just be, like, have, have my own character that I'm the official voice for. Yeah. But, because I, um, I have a, I created a Bendy OC, like, an original character. Um, it has, there's different art that I commissioned to get drawn of her. There's her, like, cartoon version w that would be, like, in the 30s, like, mm -hmm. picture flip cartoons. Then there's, like, a cartoon version of her demon version. And then there's an actual scary drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and her name is uh, Kitty the Cougar. Amazing. <laughs> and 
I I had a friend that I met uh, over Twitter who sent me a video of like voice acting stuff they've didn't done in the past. And I and I don't know if you've ever like come up with a character before or made a character, but like whenever I write a character, I can hear their voice in my head of what I want them to sound like. And yeah. I'm like, the problem is that person doesn't exist, you know? <laughs> it's like that human <laughs> being with that voice doesn't exist. It's in my head. But yeah. I, f um, I found out through that person that I met on Twitter, I listened to their acting demo reel, and I was like, oh my god this is the voice I heard in my head for this character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no joke. Perfect. And so I messaged them. I was like, oh my god, can I send you, like, a little, like, script? And can you read this for me <laughs> as my character? Because Amazing. you sound exactly like I imagined them. And they recorded it, and it's just perfect. It's oh, great. Wow. Um, And I That's came good. up with, like, a... Because you know how in the game... um. All the characters have their bendy version, like Alice was Susie Campbell, mm -hmm. and Allison was Allison Pendle, and things like that. Um, I create her in-world voice actor's name is uh, Emily Barn, and it's just I wrote like a little like a tape, like you would find sitting in the game somewhere. Yeah, and it that's... was it's so cool. Yeah, love it. <laughs> But yeah, um, where were we? Oh, this question. Okay, um, moving back to the <laughs> the swing of things. Uh, if they make a new Bendy game, would you want to reprise the role of Betty? Oh, without a doubt. I feel like there's like there's a lot more Betty that we could see, and it's it's actually really nice how well she's been received because it's actually a really quite smaller role. Um, yeah. It's the game but uh but she's had a lot of love which is nice so i would love to see more of betty i'd like to see her like break out, <laughs> like, <laughs> she's, out a, she's a very easily lovable character i feel yeah, like yeah there's not a bad bone in her voice she's <laughs> so sweet and i like how she just she doesn't she's so innocent she doesn't like see wilson as a bad guy even um, she's she just so pure-hearted she just yeah. is so forgiving and I don't know. I just I love her. Um, I love okay. the line. Uh, it's like I forget the fish's name, but it was like I think it was Henry Harold. or Frank or what was it? Harold. 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 It was like, can you please put Harold back in his tank? I was like, yeah. oh, she doesn't so like the dry sweet. air. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he doesn't like. She'd never the be dry mad air. at anybody. Yeah, she'd be she's like, oh, so sorry, so she wasn't even it. mad at Audrey. She was like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's so. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's so sweet. Yeah, I love her. I love her. is so so sweet. Um my uh my friend, I think this would be a good spot to fit it in this question and my friend asked if I could ask a, a a question that they thought of which was which I didn't have on here but it was just um how did you come up with like the voice for Betty with like her tone and like her kind of sweetness and was it like was because I know that you guys record lines with Lauren, right? In your yeah, Lauren's director. Yeah, hit my hit mic with like Lauren <laughs> in your ear, kind of like okay, so this is like this and yeah. this kind of emotion and blah blah blah. But so I was I think, just kind of curious um, about you know how she yeah. came to be. When because when I was given the um the specs for her, like the brief for her, it was like. Yeah, she's kind of like a maid, like a like a nice old. And I really didn't have any concept of the world that she would be in. So mm. for me, it was just like a very real character. She was she works in a hotel. She's a maid, and um, likes to help everybody out. And I think I tried a couple of different accents, like obviously English accents, like a northern one. I didn't want like a posh person. I didn't want like the Queen's English or anything. I just wanted. I like Northern England or London. And in fact, I took the, the London one. Took. Um, there's a, an actress called Barbara Windsor, and she passed away actually a year or two ago. And she played a um, a landlady, like a pub a pub landlady, in a, a, a soap opera in England called EastEnders. 
and she's always talking like that and that, that's how she talks all the time and I, and so I I did I, I kind of based her on that like that kind of hostess kind of uh-huh. usually cheerful although that that character was um she'd always shout get out of my pub so she would get a bit of a get bit out of my get, what, what's the what's the phrase get out of called? my pub what's the, uh <laughs> Get out of my sanctuary. Get out of Winston's yeah. office. <laughs> so, yeah, so I kind of played with that. But I remember a, a, quite a few times when we were recording, Lauren would be like, oh, you've dropped down. Because my voice is deeper than, than mm-hmm. Betty's. And so she'd be like, oh, you've dropped down a little bit higher. <laughs> and so I'd say, oh, it's going to go back up here. And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of, it was quite, it was really fun developing her. And, and I'm glad I got to to be that I love, I, she's fully formed now and i love that she's there yeah i i think betty's um aside from okay so i think characters with vo- side characters with voices i think heidi and betty are up at the top of the list yeah um, I- but of like of like love and appreciation in the community but i think without a doubt um, for side characters in general, including ones without voices, I think Steve <laughs> is everybody's favorite. Yeah, I, I think I, <laughs> big <yeah>. Steve. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody immediately fell in love with Steve. Yeah, absolutely. You see that a lot in the. I mean, if there's a fan event, it's like everyone's like, <laughs> "There is like Steve." <laughs> yeah, brilliant. It, I I love that like he doesn't even have a voice. Everybody is just in love with his character because he he <laughs> you could tell even without the voice he's such a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Also, I there's a there's a part in the game after um evil Alice Angel gets killed by good Alice. And spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yes. Well, if well, here's the thing. If people are watching my videos on my channel like they should be, then yeah. you'll 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 have seen my yeah. gameplay of this, people. <laughs> people watching, people watching. I got my eye on you. Watch my gameplay. But um you have I I realized um that you have the option to pet Tom Boris. Oh my god. <laughs> and I did and I was like I was like, it's so cute. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still crying after what just happened a minute ago, but Tom is so cute. <laughs> Brilliant. But yeah. Um, okay. Next question to stay on track. Uh, we're almost to the end of our questions, sadly. Yeah. sadly we'll go back to your mom again in a minute. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's no. not as much fun. <laughs> No, not a mom. We need Betty. We need Betty. <laughs> oh, Betty, be a good mom. <laughs> Betty would be a great mom. <laughs> she'd be she'd be like a great mom for sure. Um, I feel like Audrey would probably see Betty as a mother figure. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> she's just, right. she's so sweet. She looks happy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Who is your favorite character in the Bendy games at slash franchise and mm-hmm. why? If you have one, if you have one, I think I. Hmm. It's hard to pick favorites. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah, I think probably like I just love, and I think it's because I love the way that Erin played her. But I love Audrey. You know, I just feel like, and I know yeah. that's like kind of a really easy pick, but the way she, oh, I don't know, she's just so natural with it that she's just a real person, and it's so yeah. I love I know, how like. The Bendy game, like Dark Revival, is so realistic because, mm. like, most characters in a video game will get thrown into the world the game takes place in and just be like, okay, this is happening. And Audrey mm-hmm. literally still has these moments throughout the entire game where she's like, what's happening? This is horrible. Why am I here? Uh, like, yeah. she's never fully used to this world, but mm. other characters in games are just kind of like, the the player gets thrown in and their character's just like oh okay and Audrey throughout the whole time will like look at mirrors or see her arms and just be like oh, like scared and like terrified and it's so it's so realistic and Aaron Aaron played it so well yeah she really did I definitely a good choice for a favorite character for sure 
Um, I think one of my favorite characters is probably Sammy Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> I love Sammy. He's such a cool character. He's so <laughs> he's so silly. <laughs> um, this one. I, I, you were pro you might have been confused reading this question because I didn't know yes, how I to won't. how to write it, <laughs> but <laughs> it's like okay, so I'm just gonna read it and then kind of elaborate. Okay, so good. do you like Betty as a character? Like, do you think she's a good character in general? Like her design, her storyline, her lore. And also, do you think she's a good character, like, in the way she sees things, her narrative? Uh, basically, what I was trying to say and couldn't translate onto words is, like, based purely on her function in the game, her, her looks, her design, and what her character does, do you think she is a well-written character? And then there's the, do you think she is a good character, like positive good-hearted has good intentions has good like feelings and objectives and things like that yeah that especially, i think especially because she really isn't in it all that much but you really get a sense of her just from the short time that you spend with her like you really get a sense that she's um she's innocent and she's she's kind of not sure why she's here but she's having a good go with it anyway and she just wants to make she just wants to make Audrey comfortable. She just wants to help Wilson. She just wants to help the player. Like she's just, she is just insanely good and innocent. And but you also you feel a bit of sadness from her because she's not yeah. quite sure why she's here, and she knows she's not perfect. But yeah, I think she is. She's just lovely, and I think the fact that that was done, that was that came across in in such a short time with so few words and scenes that yeah. I think. Yeah, that's incredibly well written you, and well designed. You get so much of her character just from like three yeah. scenes in the game. But the people want to see more. I think yeah. that's, that's a lot about or the way that that she was designed. Was Betty in the the radio show? I don't remember, like the the All Star Music Review. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember sang, if she was or not. She sang. I feel like a um, feel like a woman. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I thought that would be a good like. Betty kind of <laughs> pleasure because she wants to be a real woman. <laughs> and then, yeah. Um, and we don't really know Betty's backstory. We don't know if she was a person who worked at the studio or if Wilson created her like he created yeah. the keepers. We don't really know what's what her deal is, but I think in my mind, like Wilson did create her. Yeah, but, probably. But then who knows? Like, you know, I don't knows think because I don't think any human would be that innocent and calm and completely impartial yeah, i feel like she she'd have to be artificial <laughs> yeah but absolutely she's she's so sweet i love betty <laughs> um but yeah that was a very complicatedly written question but <laughs> all right we got it we know yeah um all right uh third to last question we are nearing nearing the the finale i think i've done good at kind of keeping on track better than my previous we're ones getting for there sure. <laughs> well we have a time limit on ours because i there's a tiny human that will need me that will come running in if i'm too long so <laughs> yeah okay um okay do you have any other big projects on the way, like other video games or TV shows or short films or movies that are kind of like coming up that you're part of? Uh, there's nothing I can talk about, um, but I actually I've ended up having a bit of a I was in quite a few short films last year. I am filming something next week. Two weeks in two weeks time um but i had to take a short break because i moved internationally i moved from from england to the pacific northwest oh. so there was a good like six months where i was just trying to i had to change i've changed agents i've changed like my business and and setting up over here and stuff like that so yeah so, sounds yeah, like a hassle <laughs> yes it's big but um but yeah so there's nothing that i can talk about there's stuff that's i've recorded and, but it's still in development, so because sometimes you record things and then it will take two or three years for it to actually yeah. come. Yeah, cough, Betty, and you're under cough. NDA that whole time, so you just kind of like, <laughs> I can't talk about that. But, yeah. 
I, yeah. I I can't imagine how hard it is to have recorded all these things for Dark Revival and then just have to be silent for three years. You know what the worst thing is? I was I've done I did two games. Oh my gosh, that wasn't last year. It was twenty twenty one. I did two games. I was really excited about just great like story and great characters. And I thought I did a really good job with the acting. And both of them got canned. Ah. Oh. And and then and you then you can't talk about them, and you also can't like, yeah, you know it's not going to get out there in the wild. In fact, I did an animation for Netflix last Ooh. year, and I was super excited about that. Three weeks before the release date, it got canned. Canned. Had and it you've been, been, had oh, it... you've done all the work, but you're not allowed to talk about it. And it's had just it like... been like announced to the public? Did people know it was going to be released, or was it completely? No, out no of it the was blue? a complete yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, so this and these things happen. I mean, um, yeah, it happens a lot, especially in video games. Like, uh, my husband worked on a Star Wars game that got mm. canned about three weeks before release, and he was like, I've "Worked so hard on this for years, <laughs> it's never gonna get out there." So, I don't know yeah. if it's it's not really the same thing, but um, the uh, but I hate when like TV shows or video games will end on a cliffhanger without <laughs> having another season or another game yeah, greenlit. Canceled. Like, I just watched three different shows recently, and all of them ended on cliffhangers, and all of them are canceled. And you uh, just don't know. And they were all Netflix shows. It's all Netflix. Netflix canceled a lot of things recently. It was yeah, they, the, it, I, I watched The Imperfects, mm -hmm. ended on a cliffhanger, got canceled. I watched The Midnight Club. It ended on a cliffhanger and then got canceled. And there was another one I watched. I don't recall what it was called, but it ended on a cliffhanger and got canceled. I'm really so. worried about um, George R. R. Martin because, like, I want to know what happens in Game of Thrones, like the book. I know I got some of in the show, but I was like, read the last book. Well, I mean, I finished it a couple of years ago now, but I'm like, come on, man. You're not getting any younger. Come on, just finish it. <laughs> Apparently he's got like 500 pages left to go. I'm like, whoa, have we got time? My, <laughs> and my book that I wrote is only 150 pages. I can't imagine writing a 500 yeah. page book. But that, that's just 500 left. Like he's oh. written thousands. <laughs> I mean, the Game of Thrones books are really long. They are, they are. But good. <laughs> Yeah. Um okay, this is technically the last question because the the final one is just kind of a silly one. But okay. <laughs> okay. So um and when Dave did this, he answered it <laughs> in his Joey Drew voice. It kind of oh, gave like the Joey Drew the Joey Drew word of advice. <laughs> but the question is, if you could give everyone a word of advice, whether they want to voice act or if they want to do something completely different, what would your honest advice be to people who are watching? So when I quit flying and decided to become a voice actor, uh, it was because my husband said to me, because I was facing redundancy and my husband said to me, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? And that was his question to me. He said, if money didn't matter, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? And I told him it was voice acting. He said, well, let's make that happen. And um, for me, that around the same time, uh, oh gosh, this is gonna be quite sad, but <clears throat> a colleague, uh, somebody that I worked with, really lovely guy, um, was hit by a car and killed. Mm. And the thing that stuck out to me mostly was he didn't get to finish his story. So for me, I, the thing I've had in my head all these last seven years that I've been an actor, I've been like, life is incredibly short and it's incredibly beautiful. Take every opportunity. And that's what I would say to anybody. You have to take every opportunity. We don't know when our last day is. So we have to take every opportunity and do, do good in your life. So um, just you know, keep saying to yourself, you are worthy, you are successful, and you are kind. If you can be those three things in life, then... So go for it. Just make take opportunities or make opportunities. If something scares you, do it anyway, because successful people are always brave. Um, I think, yeah, that's kind of what how I've lived my life for the last seven years. And 
I get excited every I wake up every morning going oh what's going to happen today because I can guarantee something interesting will happen at some point and it's like wow I'm so lucky I got to experience that so yeah just yeah, have gratitude and take every opportunity that you can that's really that's that's very very sweet <laughs> it's <laughs> a very good way to think about it it's definitely really good advice dave said kind of a similar thing uh it was uh but it's definitely definitely good advice just live live your life while you can take every yeah. opportunity and do whatever you can to just make it the best and i think that is really good advice and yeah i think the other thing i'd like to add on to that because i know it's it's like it's actually an incredibly privileged thing to say it's like oh just take every opportunity and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But i know a lot of people have circumstances that might not allow them to do that but the biggest thing I would say is, especially when it comes to things like mental health and stuff like that, if you can like access some kind of, I don't know, like I, I went through neuro-linguistic programming because I had an incredibly negative mindset. And as soon as I switched my brain from a negative mindset to positive, like coming from gratitude mindset, life changed for me. And it's not easy and, I, you know, you'll slip back to it sometimes. But if you can, if there's any way you can help yourself, like get into a, a you know, a, a positive mindset in whatever situation and circumstance you are whether that's you know the, from the incredibly privileged position that i'm now in or or from where i was seven years ago where i was kind of at the bottom there you can change things around you have that power so yeah it's 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 it's, it's hard to say because you know like i say like it's it can be you can you sound very incredibly privileged by just saying take every opportunity but it's not always the big stuff that that changes your life around yeah that's yeah um sorry i blanked for a second <laughs> that's all right but yeah it's it's very it's very true you just like there is like you know there's roadblocks there's speed bumps there's all the different things there's mental health there's you know mm -hmm. physical health sometimes too is an issue with things like yeah, that yeah. but like i it's definitely the right thing the right mindset to if you can take all the opportunities you can mm -hmm. like uh i'm in a musical right now um with my high school i'm in a uh, spongebob the musical oh, cool. <laughs> and I love it. um i play patchy the pirate who's like spongebob's number one fan and um it got in the way of me being able to go on a choir trip last week where I would have gone to Great Wolf Lodge for three nights. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, I had that they both came up around the same time. Um, and I basically said, OK, so I'm writing this on. I had to write a conflict sheet for my drama thing. And I was like, OK, so if I am if I do get cast in the show, I will not go on the choir trip. I'll make a commitment to this show. And so I got cast, and I canceled the, my participation in the choir trip. Mm -hmm. And they went last week, and my sister went. She's in the musical, but she still went on the trip anyway. And um, she comes home, and she's like, man, you should have gone. It was great. It was so much fun. And I was um. like, well... I made a commitment and yeah, I got to do what I got to do, but there will always be other chances to go to places like that, to do things like that. Um, yeah. And so I just thought about it that way. I was like, this isn't my only chance ever that I can do this. I've made yeah. a commitment to one thing and I got to see it through, yeah. but it's definitely a really good mindset to just always just look out for opportunities and take the ones you can and yeah i it's it's really really good advice and mm. i've been trying to do that but it's kind of like what you said i've recently been in a pretty negative mindset mm. in like a okay. pretty like i can't do this type of mindset but i'm getting it's getting better for sure 
especially yeah. getting all the all the luck and the like like the stuff I've had with being able to do this talk yeah. to you today it's <laughs> giving me more hope that I can do the things I think I always think are impossible because mm. people like friends and sometimes even family have said like acting won't work out it's like a thing that like 15 percent of people who want to do it get to do and i was like well i'm gonna keep trying i was like i'm mm. not going to live forever i don't know how much time i have and acting makes me happier than anything on this whole entire planet so I'm going to do it no matter what it takes. Mm -hmm. There are some, there are some mm -hmm. like wishes and wants that are definitely actually impossible, such as me saying, I want to go, I want to be in, I want to have gone to space before I die, which is not going to happen. But we never know. I, they mean, <laughs> I mean, unless Elon Musk makes a space prison and they have a, like a, like a $2 room where you just sleep in the broom closet. I'll, I'll do never that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it could yeah. happen someday. Maybe we'll migrate off earth in my lifetime, but yeah, <laughs> You never know. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely it's definitely good to just do what you can while you have the chance. But yeah, that was the last official interview question of our of our interview today. <laughs> the the only thing I have the only thing I have left on the page <laughs> is asking if you could, as Betty tell everyone to subscribe to the channel because <laughs> dave did that too he was like subscribe to the poetic mind cart and i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> and i was like um now that's in my outro to my videos oh, i've always really? i've always had this song that i use that builds up to my outro screen and usually it has this quiet part where it's just a voice that says everything changes and then it goes mm -hmm. da, 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 and explodes <laughs> into my outro screen. But I've changed it now. I've edited the music. So it builds up, it builds up, and then it says, subscribe to the Poetic Minecart. Da, 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 da. And it just <laughs> goes into the music. And I want to eventually, as I do these interviews, build on that. It'll be like, subscribe, 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 subscribe. To the poetic <laughs> mic card. <laughs> and then yeah, no, have it great. all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you ready? Yes. Subscribe to the poetic mind cart. Yes. <laughs> Interview success. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Oh, it's lovely chatting to you. Thank yes, you so it's much. been so nice talking with you. It's been great. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for agreeing to sit down and talk with me for an hour. Yeah, it's pleasure. definitely, it's been a lot of fun. I feel yeah. like this one was definitely more structured than my previous ones. <laughs> we got all the, we got all the silly stuff out even in the time frame. Exactly. That's all you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it definitely wasn't three and a half hours. I'll say that. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> but you know, that was just because me and Dave, it was just kind of, we were just being silly, having fun more than a, like actually doing a structured interview. Yeah. Which and if I didn't have to go back and start parenting, then I, you know, I'm sure it'd be a bit longer. <laughs> Betty's got to go deal with the gremlins now. Yeah. <laughs> <That's up there. laughs> but yeah. Um, thank you so much for sitting down with me and, and talking thank with you. me. It's, it's I, the best part about it, I think isn't the fact that I'm interviewing this person and this character. I think for me, the best part about it is that I'm showing the world what the actors are like. Because yeah. the, the world sees the character. They don't see the person behind it. And I like showing people that it's not just a character. A lot of the personality yeah. and like a lot of the like every good trait about their character is their actual person like 
with Dave. Little bit of evil. Like Dave, <laughs> Joey does like have you know the evil, sadistic, terrible side, but he also kind of has this charming, sweet, lovable side to him yeah. that you see in Dark Revival. And Dave is that person, that side of Joey. He's such a kind, per sweet guy. And yeah. I feel like you're the same way. I like showing people that they're not just actors playing a character. These people really are as sweet as they seem to be. They're, mm -hmm. There's more than just the character behind them. It's They are their own person that's really lovely mm -hmm. and sweet. And I like showing people that. Bless you. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. It was real, real fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. <laughs> but yeah um i'm afraid i've got to go i'm so sorry but i've uh yeah, i'm hearing running yeah, around he's gonna get, uh, <laughs> getting to restless a yeah i've got <laughs> to let him out the cage <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> yeah don't don't say that on, on camera i was just talking about how sweet you are yeah my child's in a cage <laughs> But yeah, uh, thanks so much for doing this with me. And maybe we could talk again someday. I know Dave said that we should definitely sit down together again one day and have another chat in a couple of years when things, oh, when sure. bendy things have gotten further or when they've done other big yeah. projects. Like if they make a third game, which I'm sure they will because there's a teaser scene at the end of the credits. I'm like mm -hmm. definitely gotta gotta talk with Dave again and try and connect yeah. with people again, but yeah, it's it was so much fun today. Definitely yes. a good start to my Saturday. Exactly. Well, I'll enjoy the rest of your weekend, and you then too. yeah, we'll back again another time. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll definitely have to talk again someday. Great. Thank you. Right. Have a good Sunday. Bye. Speaking. Have a great weekend. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Well, guys, that was, that was, uh, uh, Discord, uh, one sec, um, this has been an interview with uh what and it, i guys i i've messed up uh okay i fixed it <laughs> okay here we go this has been an interview with ali murphy um incredible 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 interview she's so sweet you guys saw i love showing the real the person behind the character because like ali is just such a, such a sweet soul like but uh i did say at the beginning i i won't tell you who but i do have three more interviews lined up <laughs> man things are going well for the poetic minecart channel guys now i gotta go edit this and probably hopefully get it posted by monday maybe i don't know um if it's not out by monday i'm sorry but we're trying here here at the poetic minecart channel nothing is too good for our joey drew family but yeah um i also have like seven unedited videos that i need to get ready and publish so i'll probably edit them today and set them to upload over the next few weeks um I still have an hour with Night Cove from months ago that needs to be uploaded. Um, I still have some reaction videos that I need to finish publish or editing so I can post them. I have some uh, I have some work to do on a specific audio project you guys know about. Um, a specific universe you guys are familiar with. <laughs> Um, but yeah, things are, things are really looking up for the channel. I'm hoping that with these interviews, the channel might actually start to get recognized, you know, um, especially in the Bendy community at this point, because 
like over the um during the signing on the weekend uh or last week there were um when I came into the chat some people it, we're like, oh my god, it's the interview guy. And um, when Dave signed my poster and said, for my good buddy, JT, some of the chat was like, oh, the poetic mind card, the interview guy. And I was like, they know me. It was so cool. But yeah, um, this, so much fun. Such a fun interview. Allie is such a great person. And my cat has been chilling here the whole time, but yeah, um, thank you guys so much for coming and watching this, and if you made it this far, then thank you for watching my content, but um, I will see you guys in the next video. I don't know what it'll be, but it'll so be something that was recorded weeks ago, so at my, my next video will be from before I even got contact with Allie, so. I, I don't know, guys. I'm trying my best here. I'm trying my best. But, you know, um, that is how it, that is how it works here. At the point of my card. But we got the subscribe message. I'm going to add it to the outro. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Subscribe, Subscribe to, to the, the Poetic, poetic Minecart.